Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my Quilting and Floss Tube channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to share how I sewed this Hope pillow using the Cherry Hill Stitchery Hope chart, some Lori Holt vintage trim, and of course fabric and a covered button to round it all off. I stitched this little extra flower from the Cherry Hill Stitchery set, and first I'm going to create a covered button. If you haven't already checked out my covered button tutorial, I will have a link here that you can go watch that full tutorial. I'm doing the smallest button that I have, I believe this is a three quarters of an inch, and I'm using the guide. I'm going to cut it out. I did just stitch this in the bottom corner of the piece of linen I used to stitch my Cherry Hill Stitchery Hope Chart. Then I'm going to center my stitch and hopefully get my back put in, or I need to put the um, cover in before I put the back. I don't know what I was doing. So we're gonna shove that cover down in. And what I like to do is double check it. If it's not lined up, just take it back out. These sets I did pick up at Michael's, but I have links down in the description below where you can get them at Amazon. I even think you can get them at Fat Quarter Shop. So I will have links to the button kits that I use down in the description. I'm going to tuck all of that excess in, and then I'm going to put the back in. Then you want to take the extra little piece, and if your fingers are strong enough, you can push that down. Um, my hands are not strong enough. So I like to take just, I have this little craft hammer and very gently I pound that in and then you simply push the button out of the button mold. I don't know if that's the technical term for it, but that's what I call it. Look at that cutie pie little button. Isn't it cute? I am addicted to making coordinating buttons for uh, all of my little pillow finishes or flat finishes. I just think it's the perfect finishing touch. All of the supplies I'm using to finish my pillow, um, as long as I could find them, are listed down in the description below. This is some lightweight, lightweight fusible interfacing, which I like to put on the back of my stitches when I make them into pillows. I'm just using a scrap. I like to apply it before I cut the stitch down. I used to always just cut it the exact same stop, exact same size, but I find this works much better. I have a wool pressing mat here, and then I have my iron, nice and warm, but no steam. And fun fact, my iron actually broke after this. Um, I'm voicing this over way after the fact of putting my pillow together. So I ended up getting a new iron, so I will let you guys know. I am just kind of, you can see I'm picking up and setting it down more than rubbing it back and forth over the stitch. Let's go ahead and press the fabric I've picked for the bottom and back of my pillow. I like to do it the same. You could always do it different fabrics if you want, but I really loved this teeny tiny little green floral from Lori Holt. Um, she has some great little teeny tiny designs. For me personally, especially with a small pillow like this, I am looking for a small print. I am not looking for a large print because you're not gonna see very much of that. Uh, a medium print would probably be okay, but I find that I really, really love the small prints. Next, I am gonna grab a ruler and I like to kind of draw out my lines before I cut anything. This is a safeguard to make sure that I um, don't accidentally cut it too small. I am measuring three quarters of an inch away from the top stitching line and the sides. So you're gonna see as I go around, I'm just double checking and it really only matters for the top and the sides and I'll show you why because I am going to attach some rickrack. I used to be afraid of sewing with rickrack, but I have found the more I do it, the easier it gets. I absolutely love the Lori Holt vintage trim rickrack. I also like uh, Lady Dot Creates rickrack. 
This is probably the most important part of this is measuring and remeasuring and double checking. So I like to step back. I like to look at it. I am checking all of my borders and that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead now and cut this down. Not going to worry again about the bottom. I'm just following that straight line that I drew and then the straight line. And I'm really okay with a little waste, waste here. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I am going to draw a line a little bit closer to the stitch, not three quarters of an inch away. This is the Lori Holt Coral Large Vintage Trim Rick Rack. So instead of three quarters of an inch, we're going to measure about a half inch from the very bottom stitch line in this design. Following that line, I'm just going to cut off that little end there. I'm going to leave it a little longer. I don't want to have it too short, so I like to leave it a little longer. And I'm going to put a pin in it. And we're going to line it up right along that line we drew. Oh, that's going to be cute. I like it. And then I'm going to pin it in place. I'm a pinner. I just feel better about pinning. It keeps everything right where I want it to go. So what I'm doing is that black line is showing right in that little hill, the bottom of that hill. Do you see that? You can't even really see it, but that's what I'm lining it up with. And I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. So here I am at my sewing machine. And I am going to basically do a basting stitch to stitch this Rick Rack trim in place. You could, if you feel comfortable, stitch the Rick Rack and the bottom border at the same time. However, I advise against it. That is what I used to do and I was always unhappy with the results and so I wouldn't use Rick Rack. I find it best to go ahead and stitch this down. It is an extra step and then take it over to your machine, or pardon me, over to your table, and you can add your fabric. So I don't need a very big piece. I'm just going to cut this wide enough to go along the bottom of my pillow. It's more than I need, but I don't mind. So next, I am going to lay the fabric front to front and again it's bigger than my stitched piece that's okay so you'll notice that just the very tippy top of my rick rack is showing we are going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from that edge of the fabric so when i fold it over see how that's going to look isn't that cute that's actually just about perfect I do have a quarter of an inch foot on my sewing machine. I highly, highly recommend it. I absolutely love it. I am going to just draw a line so that I don't get off since this isn't on the edge of my fabric. And again, I am going to go over to my sewing machine. In fact, I think I maybe chose not to use my quarter of an inch foot since this was in the middle. I'm just going to follow my... Um, drawn line. I'm going to shorten my stitch length because this is going to be a nice seam and we're going to stitch along our quarter of an inch line, making sure to pull the pins as I go. And there we go. Oh, that's going to be cute. So the front of our pillow is basically done. I've got my wool pressing mat and iron back out and I am ironing everything. I'm pulling the fabric away from the rick rack really nicely, smoothing it out. And then I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to take my ruler and my rotary cutter and we're going to stitch or pardon me, stitch, trim away that excess cross stitch fabric. Then we're going to trim down the front evening up those sides.
Next, I want to leave about two and a half inches from the rickrack to the bottom. And there is the front of our pillow. Next, I wanna measure my pillow. Looks like it's about seven by five and a half. Is that right? I noticed that something wasn't very even, so I'm gonna fix it. I think it's five by seven. I think I trimmed it down to five by seven. I did. Okay, that looks pretty good, nice and straight. Let's go ahead and trim a piece of backing fabric to five by seven now. This is very much a trial and error. Um, hopefully my trial and error will help you with finishing your pillows. Just know, take it slow, and I kind of go by the motto of cut your fabric a little bigger than you think you're going to need, because you can always trim it down as you saw me doing there on the pillow front. Uh, I was only trimming like a 1 16th maybe of an inch off the side just to kind of straighten and even it all up. It, it'll be fine. I will have a little leftover piece here that I can throw in my scrap bin. Got to get my ruler going the right direction. Okay, now I'm going to place these front to front and pin them together. And we are gonna sew around the entire pillow, leaving a little opening along the bottom. Now, instead of pins, I love to use these Clover Wonder Clips. I also have these listed down below the video here. They work great for so many things. I use them all of the time, but they work really great if you don't want to use pens. Um, if you're sewing with vinyl, these are you these are a must because you can't put a pen through the vinyl or you'll have a hole. They just work great. So down at the bottom, I'm going to leave about I would say a two inch opening, and then I'll do a ladder stitch to shut it. So I'm going to stitch, back stitch a little. I did switch to my quarter inch foot. As I come to a corner, I am going to lift up the presser foot, pivot the fabric, put the foot back down, and sew down the other side. And I am going to do this on each side. As I get to the corner, a quarter of an inch away, I will pick up the foot, pivot, and keep sewing. I like to make sure I'm using a pretty short st stitch length here. We are gonna be stuffing our pillow. Now, I didn't put fusible interfacing on the back, the back fabric. I do sometimes and sometimes I don't. If you want it to have a little more structure, I would suggest that lightweight fusible interfacing or if you want quite a bit more structure, even a medium weight, or you can do like I did. I like to go on the corners and just kind of trim them at an angle. Just make sure you don't get too close to the stitch line. And then I want to turn it inside out and just take your time with this. Start small and just start gently pushing out the pillow. I think this is probably one of the most important parts of pillow construction with your cross stitch finishes. You want the corners to be as pointy as possible. And so I gently work them out with my fingernails and then you can even take like a little stick or something or like a, a chopstick is not a, not a stick stick and push them out. You just don't want to push so hard that you make a hole. This actually looks pretty good. Oh, don't use that sharp piercing tool. That's not what I meant to pick up. There's my bamboo stick. And then what I have found that is my favorite, my current favorite for pillows is a combination of polyester fiber fill and poly pellets. So that is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you. Um, I am pushing out those corners and then I'm going to flip it over and I want to iron it. Before you stuff it, go ahead and give it a good press. Um, 
it, it just, it's worth it because you're going to end up with a pillow that looks so much nicer. Fold in those edges along the bottom so that you have that nice seam. It's all nice and flat. It's gonna give you the perfect little spot to do your ladder stitch. I even ironed right over the top of my cross stitch. And then let's go ahead and move that out of the way again. We're done with our iron. And with the polyester fiber fill, I've mentioned this in my other pillow tutorials, loft, loft, loft. When you are working with polyester fiber fill, you want to make sure that you are lofting it. You don't wanna just take it straight out of the bag and shove it in your pillow. I used to do that a long time ago when I would make stuffed things, not necessarily cross stitch, but lofting is pulling it apart, pull it apart, pull it apart again. I loft mine a lot. Then I like to take it and I like to stick some polyester fiber fill in all four corners. I like the corners to have the polyester fiber fill. And then from there, I will kind of start filling with poly pellets, which I'll show you. Highly recommend whether you're using poly pellets, uh, walnut shells, lizard litter, whatever it might be. Crushed walnut shells, pardon me a funnel. If you're trying to put that kind of product in a small opening like the opening here at the bottom of the pillow, a funnel is going to give you so much more control. I just have these little white plastic funnels. I think I probably picked them up at the discount store and I use them to help funnel in that kind of thing. So here I'm still shoving uh, polyester fiber fill, lofting it and sticking it in all four corners. It may shift a little, that's okay. I just kind of like to start with it in the four corners, maybe even along the sides. Take your time with it. You will be so much happier if you do and it always takes more than you think. Um, I know I've said that in my other pillow tutorials. You've probably heard it on other um, floss tubers or pillow tutorials as well, but it generally just takes so much more than you think it's going to. So I am doing a pretty good base layer of polyester fiber fill, basically in the corners and around all the edges. And then those poly pellets are really going to help fill in all of the little nooks and crannies, and I will even be adding more polyester fiber fill as we go. Here is my funnel. Here are the poly pellets. I love them. And then I'm just gonna fill up my funnel and I'm going to start just kind of pushing it down into the pillow, letting those poly pellets funnel in. And I kind of even overfilled it at this point, they're gonna go in, but you really have to kind of keep pushing and shoving. I should have started with a little less in my funnel. You can see me shaking it and trying to get them to work down into the pillow. And look how stuffed our little pillow is starting to look. And then I like to press. You're gonna notice me pressing and pushing and all the things. Let's add some more. More is better, always. And I made a mess, so I'm just picking some of them up, as always. More polyester fiber fill, loft it and start sticking it into the corners because it, some of that has shifted and we need to fill in and make sure we have a nice pillow shape. The polyester fiber fill for me gives it that beautiful shape, but the poly pellets give it that weighted, more beanbag quality that I love. And they're a lot cleaner than walnut shells or lizard litter. I have the wa crushed walnut shells and I really like them, but I have to say the poly pellets are so much less dusty. That's part of the reason I like using them. When you have your pillow filled about what you want, I like to just use some uh, Clover Wonder Clips and I am checking. I like to push and kind of prod and I feel like it still could use some more but that's gonna hold it shut so we're not losing a bunch of the poly pellets. And we're gonna go ahead and add more. The bamboo stick here, this one came in my polyester fiber fill, is super handy for kind of pushing everything down in place and helping move it around. And 
I tend to, this is how I do the pillows. I stuff it and then I check it and stuff it some more. And sometimes I check it and stuff it some more. That looks good. I am going to take some thread now. Um, a heavier weight thread or a stronger weight thread, craft thread would be ideal. I still don't have any. I know I need to pick some up and put a little knot in the bottom. This does work and I'm gonna do a quick ladder stitch because I want to be able to close up the bottom. Now my pillow, I do want it to look fairly tidy. So that's why I like the ladder stitch here because I am not gonna put a trim on here. My trim is that Rick Rack And I'm trying to go right here in my seam. So grabbing a little bite, going straight across and grabbing another little bite and it's creating this ladder. You can even go back the other direction if you want to. I'm sure that's probably not the technical thing to do, but I uh, always like to make sure mine is nice and secure, especially uh, if I am not gonna be sewing a trim onto the outside of it and hiding it. I'm trying to do my very best to make it as neat as possible. And just remember, we're always learning. We're always improving our skills. Uh, I would say that the hand stitching things are the hardest for me. I know I cross stitch and all of that, but I, I literally am the any of these kind of stitches are not things that I grew up knowing how to do. So it's always a little bit of a, a challenge for me, but I think it's worth it. Now I did end up going back the other way. I just didn't feel like it was as secure as I wanted. So I kind of am just turning around and going back. Again, I'm trying to hide my stitches in the seam allowance. Oh, it's looking pretty good. So the rest of the embellishment for my pillow today, I decided to wrap a little bit of decorative twine around my pillow and then secure the, the button to the center of that bow. It's a very simple little finish and I think it's gonna just be the perfect accent for my little Hope Easter pillow. Uh, I'm gonna go through that last loop a couple of times to secure it and then push that through my seam allowance out the back of the pillow and trim it that just buries the knot inside of the pillow. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. And then I am just kind of giving it a good massage, I guess, uh, flattening it out, moving the contents all around. I think this might be my first long skinny pillow, uh, vertical pillow, and I think it's so cute. This green twine is from Stampin' Up. Stampin' Up has the best ribbons and trims, uh, at least my favorite. I love them. And I picked this up in a bundle. I think it came with turquoise, orange, and green. And this green just matched the whole vibe here. I am generally not a huge green person, but I just loved it. I loved the pink and green for spring and Easter. It just is so pretty. I think even this could be left out in the entire spring season, truly. I wrapped it around two times and then I just want to secure it into a bow. I didn't like my first bow. We're going to give it another go. I think that's going to look better. Then I am going to take my needle and thread and I am going to secure my button right over the center of my bow. So we're going to go into the pillow and then through the button a couple of times. I just want to do a quick knot in my thread here. This is a craft needle, not a cross stitch needle that I'm using. I think maybe I twisted this all up and I had to start over. Sometimes that happens, maybe not. I think I go through a couple of times and secure it and then we'll just tie it off, hiding it underneath. And then uh, again, trying to bury that knot inside of the pillow. Let me know in the comments if you have tried making a covered button. They are really one of my very favorite things. 
Yep, I did not like that at all. I leave this in because I like to show you real life. Um, and it's okay. If you're not gluing it, you can almost always fix it. I think I'm gonna like this better. And don't be afraid to take a few extra minutes. It takes hours and hours to cross stitch a piece. It's okay to take your time with the finish. I know I think it's our nature to wanna hurry, but I promise if you just take that few extra minutes or extra hour or whatever it might be, you will be so much happier with the completed project. And we're gonna do a little knot. I know I've sped it up so it looks really fast, but this took me over an hour to do my pillow finish. So not that bad. And there we go. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this fun pillow finish tutorial featuring some rickrack trim and using poly pellets and polyester fiber fill to fill your pillow. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube, and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.